being on the web, dude. I a little bit, Jeff D, just DM the game, and he's kind of cleaning up the mess here, so if you have just a minute. But we have Jason Braun, for those who don't know who he is, he's the one who did our original, not this logo, but our one we have on our website. That's, that's Mr. Jason, he's done some other stuff. This is Errol Lotus, for those who don't know. <clears throat> this will be Jeff D when he arrives here. Back in. <laughs> Janelle Jaquez, she actually does last year's logo, it's the current logo for this year. And then we have Diesel LaForce. And he's done various things for TSR, cartography, and stuff like that. He's actually got a table out in front of the lobby. So. These are the artists today. Um, an idea submitted by Errol Otis last year after the artist panel was that we should get some people to submit monster descriptions. So what we've done is got monster descriptions over the year from various people. And they've given us a good description. Some of the descriptions are longer than others. We're going to give one of these to each person. They're different. They're going to each one have a different monster to draw based off the description that was given to us. So when I hand these out, they're going to take a few minutes to read because some are longer than the other. And then they're going to draw. And during their drawing time, you guys can pop questions to them. I'll try to, you know, let you do one at a time. We can't be asking them all at once. And there may be some that are collaborative questions because these guys all, except for the ones down here, all worked for TSR at one time or another or did stuff with TSR. So if you have particular questions about things in their history, I actually have a couple submitted from online that people want to know about. So we'll fill questions while they draw. And they'll be able to draw for a good 45 minutes plus. And then afterwards, we're going to take these little sketches and they'll actually be auctioned off at the, uh, well, the auction happens in here at 4.30. So if you want to try to win one of these little sketches, you have the opportunity to. And the, oh, 4.30? <laughs> yeah, and the, oh, I mean, it's a sketch. We don't need, like, a finished product here. Uh, but the actual ultimate goal is, is after we get these done, we're going to scan them in. So even if you win the sketch, you can't take it home until later. Um, we're going to want to scan these in and put, and put them online and let some of the other people in the community decide which one they'd like to see as a meme. And then if we get, if we find one, it's, you know, overwhelming people like to have a meme based off its abilities and stats and even the picture what it looks like, then we'll work with trying to produce a meme next year, working with that artist to maybe produce a color one. You know, have a con. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So I'm going to kind of mix these up because I'll, if I look at the descriptions and assign them, there's certain ones I might assign to an artist that I'd really not do that. <laughs> so I really just kind of mix them up. Although that's the way it would have been done, you know, say, at the company. Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to give, I don't want to give somebody some favoritism because well, if I give them something really good at. Exactly. All right, so we're going to go in this order. That's really good. <laughs> Looks like Jason's going to be assigned the sleeping horror of Spindridge Keep. My nickname in high school. There you go. <laughs> so, he's going to read through the description right now. 
to himself to get a little bit about it, and then later on we'll actually go over some details with it. Uh, this one's called Troxnison. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that Bill Barker did that. So. Okay. This one's for when Jeff gets up here. This is called the Guardian oh. Serpent. Submitted by Pat Mike. And you're getting the one from Michael Curtis. It's called the upside down, inside out thing that should not be. <laughs> okay. And we need surgery for that. <laughs> this one's called the flesh ball. And I don't know if this submitted that, but that's for you. See, so I'll read your description. Take three minutes. Do you have some uh, extra paper? Oh, you have some paper. Did you bring the paper? Just give me the paper. Oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah, so we're supposed to just the paper for everybody. Sorry. Yeah. 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 It hasn't been distributed. Um, I'm going to pick this one up. Because I thought that's wrong. Right. 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 Um, okay, we only have four extra sheets, so don't mess up. Okay. I only, right. one of you don't whatever mess up. Whatever Mike gave me is what I got. <laughs> Mike's supposed to give us at least two of these. Well, so I'll read through your description. He might not have counted well. Okay, we're good. A couple extra. Right. And once y'all read through them, we'll give you a few minutes. You got, you know, they obviously can't answer questions while they're reading, probably, so. But uh, once they're done reading, they can start working on the drawing. We'll fill some questions. But we'll actually probably stop and read these descriptions so you kind of know what you're trying to make. Uh, it's up to them if they want to stop at any point and show you where they are so far. But uh, so just give them a minute. Yes, sir? A question for you, Doug. Uh -huh. How'd you get so good at introducing artist panels? <laughs> I've never done it before. I don't know that I ended it last year. I think Mike did. So. No, I'm just, uh, I'm here. And, and, and just be forewarned that during the auction, watch out for this guy, because he bought every one of them last year. Yeah. Hawk time and dragging down the hall if you want to try to win them. The real question is, I don't know. If you just combine the art here and then go that board, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Last year's panel, for those that weren't here, they each only got a short time to draw a sink. We took like a random shape, I don't remember what it was, a circle or a figure eight, something, I can't remember. And we gave it to them and then they drew something from that image. Then they spent about 10 minutes apiece. There's only three artists up there, right? That was Carol and Jeff and, and uh, Janelle. And they actually spent about 10 minutes a piece drawing something. And we switched the paper. The next artist drew another 10 minutes on that drawing and then did it again. So you have one up with a you know, picture drawn by three different artists, you know, kind of added to it. Pretty slick. He's got them all. Hey, Doug. Yes, sir. The last one with these one added. Uh huh. That one was good one. Oh, were you? Okay. I didn't have a name on it. Now I got the creator. Uh, <laughs> the creator is in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Come up and direct it. <laughs> <laughs> He's already trying to read these. Did you see it? <laughs> you might want to hand that off, Daryl. <laughs> yes, we can start with that. Okay. And then once I see everybody actually start, then I'll just go questions. Like I said, some of these descriptions were way like. I think Janelle's is about a half page, and down there he's got three pages. I need so. a bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> Someone read this to me. Uh, all I have to do is store the background on it. They didn't have it, so it's around me. Well, if I'd, if I'd have shuffled it and he got it, he got it. I had to make it hard on you. There we go. <laughs> it, it helps me grow. Okay, one of the, uh, somebody that's not, didn't, couldn't make the con this year, um, 
actually with this little bit of history about the uh, logo with the face and the TSR in it. And his email says, before the official TSR face logo was decided on, there were three artists who submitted multiple proposals in the fall of 1980 for the next logo. The artist designs were looked at, and a combination of two of Darlene's logos were eventually decided upon, which became the TSR face logo. He says, uh, Jim Rosloff is one of the artists, and uh, of course Darlene was one, and they don't know who the third person was, they didn't know if it was Errol or someone else. And of course, I've already asked Diesel this, he wasn't sure he thought it might be easily. And so they want to know if you might remember Earl. Who might I didn't do process. it. No, you did it? I did not. I do not know. Maybe Jeff might know. Maybe oh, it. Jeff? No. You don't, I don't remember either? I, I mean, that was Darlene's yeah. picture. I didn't know that it was actually even uh, yeah, for the contest. Yeah, yeah, apparently the three did. And I've got, these are the images that uh, Darlene submitted. And if you remember, the logo ended up being the space. Yep, yep. part of the Yep. Together. And actually, yeah. according to today, when I was talking to the Diesel, you know, they got that logo. They actually got sued by Procter & Gamble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. These are all the ones that Darlene's made. Yeah, it turned out being a combination of these two. But also, uh, Jim Rosloff submitted these. I have them in bigger form. These are seven of these eight. I don't know why we don't have a label. Uh, we're all going to go. Yeah, do you remember those? Just send me a thing. Oh, Jason, what are you doing? Go home? Oh, okay. <laughs> Just let me know where you're going. Just call me. I think you can exit right there. Oh, you don't have a key? You just go around the front. I fear you're all actually leaving. That's not. That's fine. Don't worry about it. I wouldn't. <laughs> just go around. I'm not sure if we pulled it because of that, but I know we have a lot of problems with them. Yeah, and I think, I think these people are just trying to get a little history on it. They just want to know who the third person was and if they can get copies of what they submitted. I mean, you know, we have a lot of guys on our site that like to do a little history of games, and I think that's what they're looking for now. They have another one here. Here's a couple of questions I thought to put towards Errol. So it says, uh, and he says he previously asked Jeff D., but he couldn't remember. The cover for the expert rule book has a credit attached mentioning a design concept by Jeff. Does Errol remember the specifics on the concept? This was for the... Uh, cover for the expert room. Where, 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 where we shrunk down the original cover and put it inside a crystal ball? Not sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what it was. Is that what it was? That was, that's what the, that was the concept was. thing was? Okay. Yeah, you weren't sure. You said Jeff didn't normally ask. And then in the design process for the basic and expert covers, how many designs did he go through before the official decision was made to go to East Coast Finals? Do you remember specifics on the other designs, or did you do any proposals for a third set like the companion? Uh, you mean like when we were deciding what the basic cover would look yeah, like? Yeah, you know, like how many? Yeah, did you go through a lot. Of, yeah, it's not many. I don't think so. so okay. I think I might have submitted just that, that initial sketch, and then there wasn't anything really um, objectionable to it. So, uh, <laughs> so I think everybody went went right through. Okay. Yeah, I'm, my recollection. So, we have other questions. Too. Well, back then um, we had a lot of free reign to do kind of what we wanted. Um, there wasn't a lot of art direction going on at that time. Um, a lot of times we're just handed a, a manuscript and told, okay, there's going to be a blank spot on this manuscript. Put something in it, you know, and we'd read it. Okay, I want to put that there. You know, nobody said, well, I want you to move his arm here. I want this guy wearing this. Make this a girl. You know, make this creature have more fangs or anything. Uh, they just let us do what we wanted at the time. So um, we had a lot of freedom. So it was rare that anybody came along and objected to anything that we did. That's a good thing. Yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> Don't like doing things over and over again. Unless it comes out better. Which sometimes it does. Any other questions? You guys got any questions? Yes, he's still got one. I have a question about the monster manual. <coughs> so there was a couple of monsters that looked like toys I had from Japan or Hong Kong. Rust Monster, oh, like the Rust Monster, Rust Monster and the Land Shark. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> that's I think that was Sutherland's doing. Yeah. The Blue Lake. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. They actually, I think they actually came from some of those. Right. <laughs> yeah, you can actually get through. 
And I actually I have a lot of those toys. Anytime I come across a rust monster, a little plastic rust monster, I, I kept it and I have like I don't know, ten of them. Or some large little like arm box. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, I just would grab them. He was cute. <laughs> so the toys came first, or was it made from the yeah, drawings? That's hard to say. Um, sorry, man. No, no, no. According to Tim, Tim, Tim actually had some input on that one time before that he had these the delays. He had some type of toys, whether wherever they were from that they had had for I don't know what reason, and when they got ready to try to create some monsters for things, they actually figured, well, that's what the delays look like. You know, or, or cut off a piece of the toy. That's very really good. I don't know, if, you know, what came first specifically. <laughs> in some in some cases, not all of them. Are there, but Tim, you can actually ask Tim Cassie, he some stories about some of the monsters that came to be from something they'd already seen in the toy stores, or a piece they'd taken and ripped something off and make it. How many of you did maps? Me, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Technically, I did. I mean, sort of the finals. Yeah, you did. Uh, well, at first, everybody was doing them. You know, it didn't matter. Um, but then I remember um, Elmore uh, had uh, done a map one time, and he's like, Screw this, I hate doing this. <laughs> and he refused to do another map. And uh, I said, well, I don't care, I'll, I'll do that. So I ended up doing a lot of them after a while. And then they just formed a mapping department. And then we tried to you know, be a part of it. So um, very at first. Yeah, for, for about six months, I was his boss. Yeah, he was my boss. <laughs> that, that was but, well, my time. Here, here's a question I got. You were at TSR from? The 79 to 98. When did Wizards buy? 99, I think. Wizards bought them in 99? No, 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 97. 97, so until 98 then. So a year after uh, Wizards bought And when were you, do you know? Uh, September 93 through just the first week of March, or actually the end of February 1997. And when were you at Chase Ranch, Jeff? 79, 81. And when were you at Chase Ranch? Same, 79, 80, and 81. I've been to Leech <laughs> 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 Depot. Sure I'm not even sure if he was born back then. I was five years old when Diesel was working. There you go. <laughs> Diesel could be your dad. He's handsome, Jason. He should have him to be his dad, okay? Yeah, there you go. Some have a little more than others, but there's, you know, it's in very rough stages, so. <laughs> when, 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 you normally, when you normally get something like a monster, do you, all you ever get is a description, or does sometimes somebody try to draw you something that looks like a stick figure to give you an idea when you do this stuff normally? I'll ask Janelle for it. Um, usually, it was just reference. Um, yeah, just saying, here's the thing we want. If it was Ed Greenwood making the specification, you got a stack of photocopies of the visual references that actually said what he, you know, what he thought it should look like. Um, at least that was from the TSR. Uh, West End Games used to be better about actually giving you art direction, visual art direction, but then they wanted something specific. But TSR was mostly um, give us, you know, come back to the sketch. Okay. All you guys are gamers, right? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, Earl runs a game at the con. 
but he also plays in like five games. Of the day. Okay, he plays. Now, Jeff D, I, I catch him on occasion. I've kept him more than twice. I think he sat down and played with somebody at a time, too. I, I don't know if he's played this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. But he, he, he runs like three games this year. Janelle runs two. I'm not sure if she plays any I games. I cannot play any yeah, this time. I think she just, for the most part, runs a couple games. Mostly sitting around um, shilling my next project. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Diesel um, hasn't run any games or anything. He's just got a booth out front, you know, got a few items on display out there in the lobby. Uh, various things, some sculpts, some, some of his art. I do go over to, uh, Jeff lives about 20 minutes from me, and, um, you know, I go over his house once a week, and, and uh, we play some games, you know, over there. And he, he runs games, and yeah. his wife runs games. We also have Dennis LeVay in our group, who did a bunch of early um, uh, Steve Jackson stuff, yeah. Yeah, while, while he's up here, for a short while, yeah. all, all of them were in Texas. Pretty recent. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what came first, games or art? <laughs> art. To be honest, I got into games because it was a place to sell my art. But I was playing, I was playing other games before Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, as art for sure. I and mean, then ever since of being a kid, you know, just sketching on pieces of paper and stuff. So, I, I just, for me, I was just in the right place at the right time. You know, 19 years old, lived in the town where TSR was. They heard I liked to draw when I was working in the shipping department. And um, got a job from there. Did a couple sketches for them, you know, and they said, How about a job? <laughs> uh, okay. True. <laughs> all right, my question to Jason would be, yes. I'm going to ask all of you about start with Jason. I'll notice there's children present. Yes, that was my comment. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's one of your favorite topics or, or to draw? I mean, is it scenery? Is it <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm going to have to defer that to the question. Question. <laughs> No, but I mean, what do you like? Do you like drawing monsters? Or is it just like your know, favorite thing? Human type models and females and it seems really what's your favorite type? I'm horrible at drawing females. Okay. As, which you know it's probably believable. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I, love I love drawing monsters. I love drawing monsters. Actually, yeah. Because I guess the uh, the rationale being that nobody can say that's not what that looks like. Um but exactly. Um yeah, I guess monster monsters and, and, and my weakness is you know, uh, yeah, monsters are pretty good. Okay. But, um, <laughs> oh, what is that great one? I like uh, uh, combat scenes. I like combat scenes. The results are the result, like rather than the I see you, you see me kind of moment, rather than that, it's kind of lost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe the final outcome. Yeah, yeah, we're in we're in progress here and the outcome is in doubt kind of thing. I enjoy that very good. How about you, Jeff? Um, I don't no, you like drawing at all, huh? Yeah. Alright. How about you, Janelle? Um, of course, dragons. Oh. <laughs> I generally like, if I'm doing scenes, it's usually that anticip in anticipation scene just before the whole story plays out. Okay. How about you, Lisa? Uh, ever since a kid and all the way up till now, women. <laughs> <laughs> women, okay. Now, uh, the other side of that might be because earlier we were talking about a project and uh, it was, you know, like space related. And I was talking to Jason about it, and Jason made the comment that, you know, he doesn't do a lot of science fiction. So when it comes to like a genre, what's your favorite? You know, science fiction, western, is it, you know, RPG to fantasy stuff? What's your favorite in that one? I think fantasy is fantasy. great, but I'm excited about the science fiction. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, uh, uh, fantasy, yeah, pretty, pretty much cool. number one. How about you, Jeff, since I know you do those vigilantes? Yeah, yeah. Su as superheroes. Superheroes, right. I mean, is that your preference? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much? Okay. Anything else? I guess you're just fancy. Fantasy. And then, yours is women, but I mean, women in fantasy, or women in... Or is it just, you know, well, women in I, 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 bikinis, or women in space suits? There you go. Bikini, well, space I, I like pinup artwork a lot, and I collect the I like doing that. But I also like doing... Um, like when Star Frontiers came out, I really liked working on the spaceships for that. Um, so, some sci-fi spaceships, I really enjoyed really designing that kind of stuff. Yes, sir. I got a question for him. Uh, two questions, actually. 
who's your favorite illustrator and who's your favorite fine artist? Jason? Um, I grew up with Jim Holloway. I, I started with the Red Box Franks, uh, you know, in 1985. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> and, and he just had such great comedy to his drawings and, and it told a story like, like what you were saying. Not just meeting eye to eye, but what the heck's going on. Um, and fine artists, it's, it's really hard to say. My fine art is way on the other end of the spectrum. It's almost abstract. It's just, just crazy kooky. So um, yeah, anybody with real expressionist tones, I, I don't mm -hmm. necessarily have a favorite. Okay, cool. How about you? Uh, Illustrator stuff, black and white. I like uh, Bernie Wrightson oh, yeah. quite a bit, uh -huh. but also Dave Trampier. I think uh, those just pop in my mind. Um, fine art, it's really tough. I like uh, a lot of the, the sort of uh, field rhythm things like Kandinsky, but also the weird kind of objects uh, like Miro. I think that was yeah. Sort of something that might be something floating in there. And that, like Kandinsky, also uh, de Kooning, some of this stuff. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Pepper's fine. It is. Oh, I don't know. Uh, no, just normal. Don't don't spend anything extra. I think I have yeah. Thanks. Individual top favorites. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think I have about a hundred favorite illustrator. Um, Michael Phelan was basically one of my heroes. Mm. Um, and then uh, from a Fine art, it might even be questionable whether it's called fine art, but it's late 19th century um, bourgeois art, so like de Bouguereau is um, very robust, richly rendered. But again, it's almost commercial art from, just from you know, 100 and some years ago. Right. What you? Uh, one of my favorites is uh, Virgil Finley. Oh, yeah. Um, my God, that guy could. Every time I look at his stuff, I'm, I'm astounded by what he could do with a pen, man. Um, and I, I look at his stuff all the time when I'm when I'm drawing, when I'm painting stuff. Uh, I, a lot of my ideas just come from just looking at textures and stuff that he draws. Um, as far as fine art is concerned, uh, Alphonse Luca, probably. I, I just love that Art Nouveau style, and he was the best at it. And I did women. Uh, <laughs> 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 that women thing. I guess where my love of you know part comes from mm -hmm. is, 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 is stuff. So, you know, I guess it's thing I do. Uh, um, I just love it. And the Finlay is incredible. I just. Um, Started. I saw his stuff maybe three weeks ago for the first time. Oh really? Yeah. Isn't it insane? Oh yeah. It's, it's Lucas? Uh, no, Finlay. Oh, Finlay. It, it's oh, just yeah. it's black and white pen work and yeah. A lot of stuff for like amazing stories. Oh yeah. I've got, I've got one of his portfolios. Oh yeah. yeah those are. That's terrific. I, and most of that stuff, you know, if you if you look at his stuff, um, was uh, drawn to uh, size. I mean, a hundred percent. He would do these incredibly detailed drawings. On, um, you know, I mean, if the drawing was going to be printed this big, that's how big he drew it, you know. And um, just the, the amount of work that went into that was amazing. I, I don't know how, I look at a lot of it and I don't even know how he did it, you know. I really don't. And so I just marvel at it uh, constantly. Uh, Jason, what's your favorite, uh, like, media for, you know, your art? It depends on the brief. Uh, for interiors, I use Indian ink with this same pen, or the same, this is brush. <laughs> and, uh, for other things, I do acrylic all the time. I don't waste time with oil, because I just don't have that attention span. <laughs> Basically, if I, if I work on something in oil, I'll put it away and let it dry, and I'll never get back to it. <laughs> so with acrylic, I just work fast and furious. And, uh, now, do you, do, you, do you do most of your work, I want to say what you prefer, but do you do most of it with physical pen and paper, or, or paint stuff stuff, or do you do a lot on the computer? No, it's 90% physical. Okay. Yeah, and then I'll I'll put it in Photoshop and just crop it up, clean it up. And What's your own? Pretty similar. First media. India ink for interiors and acrylics for covers, and then I also will, will usually put it in and try and touch a few things up. Do so you prefer man, the manual process? Yeah. Versus, like I say, man, I don't know a computer; it's manual, but I mean, 
you don't. I'm starting to digitize it for you. Oh uh, well, it depends. Sometimes you know you might uh, scan in like a sketch and then just take that sketch to file on the computer. Uh, okay. With color, it's, yeah, you know, okay. Okay. But you almost always start with a. Yeah, usually. I, I need to get one of those computers that you can spin around and draw on the. <laughs> on the I really yes. do. You know, I have they one, are, but your hand gets in the way. The Cinti. Okay. They are. Pardon my French. The shit. Yeah. I'm gonna get the shit. That's for sure. How about you, Cinti? Uh, I, I've gone through a whole bunch of different phases. It's pen and ink, but um, it, you know, I went through a period where I was doing a lot. But you can you can spin it around, around and leave me in flat. That's what I went through a period where I was doing a lot of games. Those were technical times. These days, uh, I like uh, <laughs> they're called micron. Um, like disposable technical pens that you put all across my ink. I do uh, color a lot these days in Photoshop. I'll do the black and white with, traditionally, and then scan it in and uh, and add the color uh, in Photoshop on top of that. How about you, Jack? In the days of uh, once upon a time, um, <laughs> I did most of my color work. In fact, almost all my color work in acrylics, um, using airbrush a lot at the time. But black and white was almost was a variation between some dip pen, some brushes, some technical pen, but basically it made a mark. Um, <laughs> these days, um, digital. I don't, I don't have the room or the time or the space for the, the traditional media anymore. How about you? Uh, I like using the Micron pens as well. Um, use a little bit of brush work, um, but very little, only if I'm doing like um, something furry. Hair or something, I'll use brush, but it's the micron pens. Um, yeah, everything I did, um, you know, had a lot of hard lines to it. And, and, you know, I came from a technical pen kind of background, or did a lot of maps and stuff. So technical pens, just you know, that's what I use. So that's what I use for the drawings as well. Yes, sir. Hey, Errol. Um, all of the. Uh Fantasy and science fiction you've done, would you say it was more difficult or easier to do art for all the water than you normally know, do? Oh, it made no difference. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. The, uh, the inspiration is, is it, uh, I mean, finding inspiration to do fantasy and science fiction, you got to really. So, uh, I mean, you've got so much out there, but all the water, I mean, did you just do it from experience or you know, <laughs> talk to people and, you know? Uh, both, both. I mean, you see things, you experience things. High school is pretty intense time, I think, for most people. So I read through it, and I was lost on it. I don't remember ever experiencing it. I think he's trying to say, which character are you? I'll have to go back and review. But uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm the guy with the the German cheating notes on. Okay. <laughs> That's it. Oh, hey, did you ever think the uh, Chromacan and Beauty and the Beast would be as popular you know we never really thought about that we really liked making them we thought they were good and then 30 years went by it's nice that people ever, anybody ever come up to you and go hey check this out and they go oh. you, you look at them and go wow where did you get that oh yeah. oh no i've been keeping up on the interest i okay. see them on ebay and, and uh, i have a few left i'm not selling much yeah yeah give yeah. me a few left Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I have a handful. I have a handful. What kind of talk? Like five. There, that we, 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 we made a special edition for Comic Con, like 2005, something like that, where I drew a little bit original in each one. And Paul wrote a little word of wisdom. And I just went down there with a friend, and we didn't sell any of them. Just, and, but since then, I think I sold about five. There was no publicity. I was just like, sneaking in. So. I think there might be a stash somewhere rotting away in a friend's basement, but it's not talked in a long time. Any other questions? Just basically done with this. I'm done. Do you have to wait a whole bit of I went to the camera. Yeah, you have until, uh, basically we'll give you the full hour, so you guys have like another 15 minutes. I mean, you can spend all the time. Even there's, there's a lot of text, there's like almost two full pages of text. It's a three-headed snake <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a mace tail. Yeah, and that's about it. I'll read you the so description. It didn't take me very long. 
Uh, these are guardian. This is this guardian serpent. Uh, the guardian creatures are shaped from the finest marble. Certain types include black marble with white streaks, white marble with diamond-like spots. Uh, using techniques from a long lost priesthood, whose worshippers unless their goddess self perished during the catechism. Guardian serpents were sold or given to anyone willing to finance their construction. So that's kind of gives you a little info about it. It's supposedly 30 feet long or longer. Three-headed serpent with a large mace-like. You know, at the end of the tail, the heads project several feet from the body of the statue and have gem eyes. Typically emeralds, rubies, or diamonds. This can't be removed until the statue is destroyed. And then it activates the statue back. And then, uh, so that's kind of what it is. There's some details on its rarity and its stats and some things like that, but that's the that's, that's description kind of used to get from that. That's pretty good. Thank you. What we'll do at the end, we'll let everybody, you can get up and fall by and kind of get the picture score. So. I don't need to see anything. You don't need to see them all. That's the best. <laughs> Just based off description, description, I think Janelle's going to have the hardest one to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got it. You know, it's just that kind of head wound up. What <laughs> <laughs> do you guys say when the young people or parents ask you what they're, they should do with their lives? Should they go to school to study art? Or should they give it up? Or should they stay at home and do their art? Should they save their money? So it all depends what their stuff looks like, I suppose. Oh, so you look at their stuff and you go, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, well, you always give encouragement, you know. I mean, if, if somebody who really loves doing the illustration, they want to draw, you know, and even if their stuff is, is for crap, you know, you, you still want to encourage them to do it because um, they still might develop that talent to really, you know, blossom. I, I've seen some artists that for years will be, you know, real stagnant in, um, and, you know, it just barely passable, and then all of a sudden, bam, you know, it's just wonderful stuff starts coming out of them because, uh, you know, some light bulb goes off in their head or whatever. So, um, to discourage somebody t from totally drawing, I wouldn't do that. You, you should know? never do that. No, I won't. No. <laughs> but, you should, you should give them, I would say point them at, it depends, it depends on their talent level. There are few out there who are what we'll call natural talents. They know enough to just walk into a career. I have met a few of these guys and girls over the years. Um, there's a lot of them that if you put them in the right educational setting, um, they'll blossom. And the problem is, is it's finding that right educational mm -hmm. system. The, there was a whole time period, particularly when I was in school, um, or that's back in the dark days, back when we were still having to grind our own paint. Um, <laughs> but um, there was a time when the whole art, all the art teachers were basically failed, you know, 60s hippies who were only into abstract, there was no realism, nothing, you know. So yeah, you could get some good people who taught you how to throw paint around well. But as far as emphasizing realistic representation, that was that went out of fate, out of popularity for a while. And then if you wanted to do like commercial art, well, you, you know, kind of got looked down the nose at some universities for, you know, being a commercial artist. Um, but the trick is, is go, tell them to go look at schools. Um, look at what the professors in the school are doing. If they're doing something that speaks to them, that excites them, and there's probably a good chance that the, this, this, the, those professors will pass on something of their skill, their experience, onto the student, and they can learn from that. Otherwise, they're going to be learning in spite of that. I might also throw out, this might be a good time to consider pursuing your art, but not spending a lot of money on education, just as a, a strategic strategy. You know, if someone's good enough to actually make a little money on the side and then earn it support at the same time, maybe just put off school. It's a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, it's a practical sort of <laughs> no, angle. Um, although I do warn them that it, it is a hard profession to really break into and, and make money at. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of hungry people out there that are willing to do the stuff a lot cheaper than than yeah. you just to get their foot in the door. You well, know? Part of the problem is like the same with computer game industry, you know, the tech related industry. A lot of these places, they will look at your portfolio, but to get your portfolio in front of someone in human resources, past human resources, 
you usually have to have that BA or BS because their filters grab it and throw you aside. Because most, most universities, a lot, of, a lot of companies these days, particularly the really good ones, triage. You know, not, not that that's an acceptable or good thing to do, but they use, they use your education as a triage point. Yeah, that's going to be my question. Um, do you have any professional training starting with Jason, or is it just something you've done? Well, um, 9 to 5, I'm a graphic designer, for sure. Uh, in fact, I took a tour of Milwaukee Institute of Art Design back in 90 or so, and they told me, only so many people can draw Conan. We don't need those people. <laughs> 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 uh, you know, so I became a commercial artist. But um, what we always tell our interns is, it's not too late to change your major. <laughs> so yeah, just follow your, uh, follow your bliss. But yeah, my, my BFA is in uh, graphic design. Okay. How about you? Uh, af after I left TSR, I did go to illustration school. And I never finished. And I was just going to be at Cal. But I didn't finish that either. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have what they call some college. Uh, I got you. <laughs> How about you, Jeff? Uh, I, I got hired into TSR right out of two years in the Joe Kubert School of Cartoon and Graphic Arts, um, where uh, it was a great opportunity to spend a couple of years doing a lot of art, but, um, I, and I don't know what the school is like now, but at the time, the selling point was, oh, we have all these working uh, comic book and and comic strip artists as instructors, which was great if what you want to do is sit and watch professional comics and current, uh, comic strip artists do it, uh, applying their trade, but they had no idea how to teach people. So, uh, it's a bittersweet. I don't know. <laughs> two, two years of the three year course there, and then got work at TSR. I had um, a four year degree. Bachelor of Arts with a major in Fine Arts. Um, so I graduated with an art, you know, liberal arts graduate with an art major, so really useful. Um, but I rolled right into doing freelance illustration and game design right out of college. So just, and again, like Diesel said, there was a point in my career where the things clicked and my art style changed. How about you? Well, I had. Um, I lived in Lake Geneva where TSR was founded, and uh, my only background with art was just, uh, I like to go to the art room in high school, and that's where I spent all my free time, it was just going there and learning different things that way. And then when I came to TSR, uh, and I presented a few uh, sketches to them after they found out I liked to draw, uh, got hired on, and I could <laughs> um, I learned everything pretty much from working with everybody else. You know, I got to, I, I had it great. I worked in a bullpen situation with all these wonderful artists, and I would just watch what they would do every day, and I would just kind of process that, and occasionally I'd go and, and um, try and mimic some of the things that they were doing, and uh, just learning from them. Um, so that's where all my education came from, is just working with other talented artists, really, in high school. That's it. You've got about a little less than 10 minutes. So. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. well, okay, let me I'm put it be sitting here. Uh, didn't somebody say 4.30? I said, well, okay, we can go up to 4.30 if we need to. That's what I'm going to do. I'm, 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 if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's going to happen. Mike's going to come to the door Whoop. before and say, can I set up for the raffle yet? And I'm going to say, Mike, they're done or they're not done. I'm just trying to, you know. Well, you can yeah, set up. Oh, I'll, 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 I'll hold them off. Wow, the time is really going fast. Yeah. <laughs> but if he comes in, we'll, we'll hog time. Now, you guys can think all the way at 4 30. I don't have a problem. Though. I'm Can going to. A question. Please, Chief. Uh, sir, you mentioned the Joe Kubert um, Design School. Yeah. Have any of y'all ever done any comics or graphic novels? Should I start with me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, um, I did a. Uh, uh, a Penciled a short story in DC New Talent Showcase. Oh, that's really cool. That was terrible. <laughs> uh, I I penciled some issues of um, uh, Macross Next Generation for a company called Kamiko, 
which pretty much consisted of watching the videotape of the episode that we were doing the comic of and translating that to comics, which was fun. Uh, but I, mostly I did inking in comics. I inked the Badger for first comics for quite some time uh, and some other stuff. Um, and then, of course, we did a four-issue miniseries of Villains and Vigilantes for um, Eclipse back in the day. So, a bit. For me, mostly it would just be considered any fan stuff I did. And, and I did that strip in um, the, the Dungeoneer, The Edge of the Galaxy. That's about as close to it as I got. Uh, as close as I got to doing any comic work was um, Tim Truman was working on Star Slayer uh, in McAfee. Anyway, I um, inked a few pages on that. I, I helped with a few pages of The Badger um, when Jeff Butler was doing it. And um, that's as close as I got to doing comic work. Mr. Jason. Um, Nothing really, aside from drawing dirty things on dice bags. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll see Mike bought a lot of. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, just one cute little anecdote. Uh, I did ink backgrounds for Mike Gustavich on some comics for Marvel, including the first issue of um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the X Men spinoff. Um, X-Force, X-Force. No, New Mutants. New Mutants. New Mutants. Oh, really? And cool. if you look very carefully in that issue, uh, in the library in the X-Mansion, you can find a copy of Villains and Vigilantes. <laughs> 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 oh, that's too cool. That's now too cool. I regret that I don't have those anymore. Yeah, okay. that's so true. true. I, I haven't really. I, I just did a couple of single-page things, experiments, but I, I realized I didn't have the patience to do that. With the discipline or something. I did one page and I said, wow, that's good. I can't do any more. <laughs> <laughs> for, for me, it was the ability to repetit repetitively recreate a recognizable character. Right? Mm -hmm. And that was, I mean, that's really the, the, the real challenge of doing of comics is to be able to say, go from panel to panel, view to view, and just say, oh, yeah, that's that character, that character, that character. It's the same character. Okay, I understand that. Yeah, I, I really. Uh, that. I, I really admire comic book artists, um, you know, for that ability to do that and to, and to, to, to draw the human figure over and over and over again so well, you know, in so many different positions. It's just... Now, now we know that you're a graphic artist 95 down here. Yes, sir. Commercial graphic artist. So what do you do for a living today there, though? Oh, uh, I work for... Uh, Activision, a studio called Toys for Bob, and we make computer games. And we came out with Skylanders last year. Yeah. And it's a very good game. I can actually say that. It's called Toys, toysforbob.com. It's actually, really, I love that. It's, it's actually really pretty good. fun. It's, yeah. it's, it's good for cool. kids and also a whole generation of gamers after. It's <laughs> leveling up, you know. Cool. What's with Jeff? I run two different small paper uh, tabletop RPG companies, um, Monkey House Games with Jack Herman doing villains vigilante stuff and uh, and my other superhero system, Living Legends, and um, uh, uh, Unigames with my partner Taljamir and Murr. We just did Cave Master and this is very good. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Um, what? I just like the, the, challenging me right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, we have a system called, called, called Pocket Universe. Uh, I'm running the fantasy implementation of that tomorrow morning, Quicksilver. Uh, and hopefully I'm doing a version of the Empire of the Petal Throne setting with uh, Pocket Universe uh, soon. Uh, and uh, we've got a, we've got a Teenage Demon Slayers, which is Buffy the Vampire Slayer without a license. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, some other stuff. It's an I, I run those, and I do my Kickstarter projects where I'm recreating my DSR art. And what do you do, Jim? Currently, um, I am the lead level designer on the World of Darkness uh, massively multiplayer online game project for uh, CCP. It's based on Vampire the Masquerade, um, but that's coming to an end for me fairly shortly. Um, I'm now the I'm also in about two months. I'm going to be the or actually am, but the chief creative officer for a new game company called Old School, 
that I'm forming with three other partners up in Seattle. You're going to create your own company, actually. Well, we actually, the company exists. It just needs some funding. There we go. that from the Senate. <laughs> and what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Well, I, um, I started sculpting a few years ago and uh, found I had a real knack for it. Um, I just sat down one day and just started sculpting at somebody's insistence. And uh, so now I, I sculpt and cast my own um, fantasy slanted uh, items, which I, I got for sale here. He's wearing one of them right Yeah, he's wearing one. Am I? No, no, he is. He is. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the dragon head down there. It's pretty cool. Um, so uh, that's my main focus. But I'm, I'm starting to get back into illustrating again, too. Um, kind of doing the same thing uh, Jeff D is with um, recreating some of my old illustrations uh, through Kickstarter. And uh, my first outing on that was pretty successful. So I'm going to continue doing that and making prints of that. And uh, I think I'm going I'm to start getting back into illustration again, too, because um, I was kind of out of it for a while. I, I wasn't enjoying it, but um, I'm starting to enjoy it again. I like the process of creating the illustration. I just don't like the process of finishing the thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, the, when you're looking up here and you see them all drawn, Jeff's been done for a while. And, and <laughs> last year, he was done for a while. It, it didn't matter. He was fast last year, too. He was one, when I watched Jeff draw, he's quick. I mean, I, he just is. Um, he doesn't him and haul. He, he, he's with it, so. <laughs> He did some pretty cool stuff last year. And I watched them. For those who didn't, haven't played this Cave Master game we ran it today, everybody seemed to have fun in this game. I mean, Very almost good. everybody bought a copy of the game from the day, so I get a chance. Just watch awesome. through these here in our Cave Man. It's a pretty good game. I think I think uh, Danelle's running on another RuneQuest game tonight. Mm -hmm. I, I think she had two open slots when we closed registration, so it's possible there's a couple slots open for that. Errol's is full, so you out about that. And I think uh, for tomorrow, quick service, we a couple slots open for this, too. 
they get four people in maybe or something. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think it was a full game. You just like six. You probably can do six. Six. It's funny how everybody interprets it different. You know, it's it's. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just as I'm watching back here. I'm kicking myself for not bringing my pads. I could give it to you. Oh, I stole Jason. 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 Are you watching with Jason down here? Do you want to? I actually thought I was going to have like these big, big, right. I wish. big uh, markers and oh, yeah. up on a big, you know. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I, I mean, this is. Perform. Uh, yeah, yeah. I you was know. told there'd be punch and pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, where the hell is that stuff? But, but, Gotta get you here somehow. Watching him draw, everyone here basically is just drawing the monster. He yeah. said down here, Jason's in, we got the old scene. We got walls in the hallway. And I'm just chilling all right out. Doing the scene. Now I wish I had me on this too. That's okay. This is Noodling this thing anymore. It's going to look really detailed in one area. And really well, it's only four o'clock, so you've got oh, a half hour if you want. I'm telling you. That's one thing, though. You need to know when to stop. Right. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're just, oh, I've ruined lots of lines before. Just, you know. I just can't do it. I want you to be involved or not involved with it as you want to be. I mean, if you want it to be simple and stop, that's fine. I don't pressure you to draw till 4 30. I mean, it's not a. We just want to make sure you have the time to draw whatever you want to do to try to complete to a point. Yeah, well, everybody has a different style of working, too, you know. It's, um, sure. It uh, has a lot to do with it. When I'm painting, it's a real love hate relationship. Like, I'll, I'll go and I'll be like, Jason, you're the most brilliant man ever, and an exciting man. <laughs> and then I'll be like, you are a hand. You suck so bad. And I'll just have to stop and give it a couple days and then. Go back to it and just look at it with totally new eyes, and uh, and and then you're great, and then back to wow, you really messed that up. You suck so bad, and just, and just back and forth, and then finally you get to a point where you stop on a high. You know, you're like that's awesome. Quit the way your paints. So that's I don't know if you guys are the same way. But. Well, with me, yeah. <laughs> with me, it can be you know I think I've done like a ah oh, that. That came out pretty damn good, you know. And then I might like look at somebody else's work somewhere along the way. And I'm like, oh man, that just. Or I'll pull out a Virgil Finley book. Oh man, I just I got a long way to go. <laughs> I'll never be no, a Virgil for, Finley. <laughs> for those of y'all that have been to a couple of cons, um, we haven't really had any other artists. But these, I mean, this is the first year we've had these here. Um, we've had Jeff for a couple of years, and Errol's been here a couple of years, and Nell's been here for all four years, and Jason's been here all four years. They stopped inviting me to show them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but, uh, anyway, we've been trying to get a few other artists, not that we want to be an artist con, but we just like having the artists here from you know from the TSR days. And we've asked Jeff Easley, we've talked to um, uh, Holloway up in, in Oklahoma. Is there anybody in particular you guys would like to see if the con is something? Yeah, they're willing. Okay. I, I, you know, that's not somebody, really yeah. <laughs> somebody I've contacted, but yeah, you know, we, uh, you know, we just like to have some of the artists here. I mean, especially when you've got a, a couple of them up here that actually run games, you kind of get both sides of it. You get somebody running a game, you get somebody doing some drawing. But I don't know if there's anybody in particular you guys like to see. Uh, Otis. <laughs> <laughs> he probably looks like a crazy hippie. <laughs> 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 that guy's out there. Funny hat on too. <laughs> 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 At least I don't have like, neon sunglasses. That would be the worst thing. Perfect. Actually, one of the things I would like to see is for you guys to bring your uh, summer originals and show them. I, I don't know about everybody out there. <laughs> uh, originals? Most of them have been uh, thrown away and then sold. Well, oh, yes, yes. But I mean, I know, even the stuff you're doing now, you know. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, you know, bring some of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, whatever you have, you know. I mean, it's it's just always it's always great to see the actual drawing, you know. The, the printed thing is, is is nothing compared to seeing the actual piece, you know. With, and with all its flaws, if it has any, you know, if there's like white out all over it, yeah, some way, you know, or you <laughs> cut a piece out and you pasted it on, you know. I mean, that that's cool to see. I was watching saying I think the sketches and concept pieces uh, different, you know, 
another artist that you'd like to see. Um, you know, everybody loves the original artists in PSR, but there's also a, a stock of artists out there right now that are just coming into their own and mm -hmm. that's yeah. really great stuff. I you'd like to see some think, of those guys. What I think would be really cool is to see, you know, a, a group of the of the uh, the TSR artists from the past with a, a few of the TSR or not the TSR, few of the OSR artists, that are, <laughs> the OSR artists from the now, kind of doing something like take a classic piece from like uh, I don't know, say S1 or 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 G3 and have them do it and then. See how they see how it comes out differently, because you know I, I, I like I love Pete Mullen's work. I think he does really great stuff, and uh, you know that's just something kind of interesting. Well, one of the things when it comes to drawing stuff up here, it, you know, the first year we wanted to have them do some drawing, we were or well, we did the thing where we gave them like a, a, a shape and we let them all draw what they wanted from the shape and gave them a certain amount of time. Um, one of the things when I first started asking the artists to be willing to do this was. In, in different comments, not from anybody specific, which is like, you know, be like a dog or pony show, or sort of thing. and that's what they're after. Um, so I kind of had to ask them, well, what type of things would you do? Because I mean, I don't know what artists do. I mean, I, I hear Jason, he goes to Colin the Cobb, you know, and for every, for every 10 minutes of drawing, they slug a beer or something weird, and they, you know, until <laughs> they're all, you know. There's an event called the Drink and Draw. Okay, well, I, and, and I didn't want to put on something like the Drink and Draw, but I wanted to get some ideas, and that's kind of why I've kind of deferred to their ideas, and, and Errol came up with some of those ideas for last year's and for this year's, but you know, I, I, seriously, I, I mean, obviously, I want to get ideas, but I have to pass those by them to make sure it's not going to make them feel like they're doing some dog and pony thing. That's not what we're after. Jason, midnight. Trained monkey was the word. Our trained well, monkey. That was my, my favorite right. drinker on memory. Was, was trying to ex day, explain so. to Larry Elmore what a liger was, because <laughs> we were all just sitting around a table and everybody draw a liger. And, What's a lager? <laughs> so we had to explain to a, a drunken Larry Elmore what a lager was. He did a great one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I was afraid of a little bit of that today. I thought I was going to get like some, you know, creature that everybody knew what it was. Uh, yeah, no, see, like it, that's one we didn't want people to draw. Like everybody draw an orc, and then you're trying to compare orcs. It's just we don't want to compare them against each other. No, this, is, this is cool. It, I know. They all, they all, but they all have their different styles, and you know we don't want to compare them against each other or something like that. That's not what we're after. We're, you want to kind of see everybody's individual. Um, I want to know how I can get the mini that's made from these things. <laughs> well, once, well, actually, if we get to the point to make the mini, yeah. which we'd like to do, I mean, everybody up here can have one. You guys, the artists, can have one. That's <laughs> a problem. No, 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 no. You just must it's, ask. Can I ask a question? Yes. Has anybody else here done illustrations specifically for the purpose of, uh, of uh, miniature manufacturing? Sorry, we did. I did. 